Hi guys, Coach Dawn here. I know a lot of you already know who I am, but some of you may not, so um, I'll, I'll introduce myself. My name is Dawn Bennett, and I'm excited to be part of the Texas Tigers organization again this upcoming season as the power skating coach. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I grew up in uh, Minnesota. I skated as a figure skater, and I trained there for many, many years before I moved to Colorado to finish my training there. And then I went on to skate professionally with the Ice Capades for a number of years before I settled down here in Texas. And now I've been here coaching for over 27 years. I'm sure everyone is ready to get back on the ice. I know I am. I just want to show you some exercises that you can do at home in your tennis shoes, or even you can do them in your skates, as long as you put on your guards to make sure you don't uh, ruin your floors. Uh, but you can work on these exercises so that we can get you uh, your legs ready to get back on the ice when it's time. I recommend that you do these exercises in front of a mirror so that you can make sure that you have the proper uh, body alignment and you're using proper technique when you practice. So let's get started. This is my son, Jake. He's gonna be our demonstrator today. So hopefully he can show you all the right ways to do things and I can point out the things that I want you to focus on. Okay, so the first one is seemingly easy. I call it the super squat. Um, some people this might be easy, but for a lot of people it's not. So um, this one is good for general flexibility and range of motion. I want to see you bend your knees and sit your butt all the way down as low as you can. So give it a nice wide stance and drop as low as you can, nice and slowly so that you don't have anything hurting. We're trying to work on that flexibility. And uh, I want you to pay attention to the way your feet are. If you see how his feet are, you see that they're straight forward. If we do this on the ice, you're going to be gliding. So you got to make sure that your feet stay straight. If you stand up, if you um, happen to have a hard time with this, what might happen is turn your feet up. As you go down, your feet may turn outward. And if this happens when you're on the ice, this is going to be a big problem. So we got to watch that. So stand up again and one more time. Super squat all the way down. Make sure that your knees and your feet stay straight forward. Hold it for a bit and stand back up nice and slowly. I want you to make sure that nothing hurts when you do this, so you're not overextending anything. And if you want to add some difficulty, you can try it with one leg. You want to try it with one leg? Sure. You can either just extend your leg in front or you can just keep it behind you. Wherever you want to try it, and just try to bend as low as you can go. Keep your head up and stand back up. It's good. I think we could probably do five of these, ten of these a day. It's just really going to work on that strength in your legs. Okay, so the next exercise we're going to do is a weight shift. So I want you to have your feet pretty far apart. When you bend from one side to the other, it's like uh, it's going to simulate your stride. When you stride, you want to have your, all of your body weight over one side or all of your body weight over the other side. So as you see, when he bends, as he goes from one side to the other, he has his nose over his knees, over his toes. It's a straight line right there. You're going to feel a little strain in your groin as you do this. So make sure that you go nice and slowly. Again, in front of a mirror is probably good for you to see this balanced position. Take your time, chin up, hold. You'll feel the burn. It's not so easy, but that's really a good one for your stride. Okay, this next exercise is going to be your stride position. Get yourself a table or a chair, something to hold on to. Face it, put your feet together, bend your knees. Bend your knees more, always more, right? Extend your leg out like a stride, keep your chin up, hold and recover. No bounce, you don't wanna see any kind of bouncing in this, you wanna make sure that you're staying low in your knee. Chin up, chest up, leg extends, holds. You'll feel the burn right in the glutes, that's where you gotta squeeze. And holding that position, holding it right there, is really hard. That's what we're trying to accomplish is getting this position all the way out in your stride. So now let's try it without holding on to anything. That's the hard part. Stay back here. Stay. Yeah. So bend your knees a whole bunch and extend out and hold. Balance and recover. Good. No balance. Extend, hold. Squeeze and recover. Good. Great. That's a good one. Last one we're going to do is a crossover. So keep your hand on, one hand on, cross one foot over the top, put it right underneath your nose. Keep your chin up so we have nose over knees over toes. And this leg that's straight underneath you, it's going to be turned the same direction and you're going to hold it. That's going to squeeze and hurt. Let's turn around and do the other foot. So 
Give yourself a big crossover, nose over knees over toes here, good, and just squeeze. You're gonna feel it on the inside part of your leg here as it lifts, and you might feel some in the outside part of that hip. But again, to make this more difficult, you think you can do it without holding on? We'll try. We'll give it a try, Jake. Cross the foot all the way over. Balance there. Squeeze. Try to keep that extended leg straight, bent leg bent. Eyes up, straight forward. Great job, Jake. Thanks for your help. I hope these exercises help you guys uh, stay strong and limber so that you're ready to get back on the ice, hopefully very soon. And then it's just like riding a bike. When you guys get back on the ice, skating gonna, skating's gonna be a piece of cake. And keep working hard, Tiger Nation. You can do this. We'll see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, Coach Josh here, head strength and conditioning coach of the Texas Tigers. I'm here with Tyler Fulton, a fellow strength and conditioning coach. Uh, we're here to provide you 35 sessions of strength and conditioning program online that you guys can follow along with. Also, we'll be able to be in a chat room with you guys to help answer any questions that you may have as the program progresses. Uh -huh. Lastly, on the back end, um, we'll be throwing it to a skills coach for you guys. They'll go over handwork, uh, anything with a puck that may be necessary to keep you guys sharp in these times that we're off the ice. Um, also, we'll be uh, practicing social distancing, keeping that six feet during this program, um, just keeping everyone safe, uh, and I hope you guys are staying safe at home. All right. All right, guys, as always with our strength and conditioning program, Coach Tyler and I will always provide you with some type of warm-up to get you loose, uh, get that body flexible, increase the blood going to those muscles. So here's a quick dynamic warm-up a lot of you guys are probably familiar with, uh, and we'll start here with Coach Tyler. I'll be running him through it. So Tyler, let's go ahead and just start with Frankenstein kicks. Um, we'll go from cone to cone here, nice and tall. Good. Nice. Coming back, we're going to use a knee pull, open up those hips a little bit. I want you to come up through your toe and stay balanced. Go ahead. So as he does this, guys, the most important thing I look for is staying balanced through the feet, coming up through the toe. You can see he's not falling out of it. Maintaining that balance is very key. Nice. All right, so now we're gonna go to a quad pull, getting those hip flexors, same thing, nice and easy. So he'll feel the pull on his hip flexor. He'll also feel the pull on his hamstring of the down leg the more he actually leans forward. Nice, Tyler, nice. Good. All right, next one here is gonna be a glute and hip pull, okay? So we're actually gonna cross this leg over. We're gonna support the ankle and the knee. We're actually gonna pull up tall, okay? Pulling up tall through that toe. He'll feel this one a little bit deeper in the hips as well as the glute. Good. Nice. All right, so now we're going to activate the legs a little bit more. Okay, I just want you to stretch out. We're going to lunge. Okay, stretch up nice and tall. And when you come out of that lunge, you want to drive up out of it, back into that lunge position. Stretch. So everyone's going to be different when they do a warm-up. He may be tighter than I am um, and vice versa. So when you guys do this kind of stuff, take your time. Don't rush through it. Make sure we get good reps in. Really trying to get that body loose for speed work. So now we're going to add a little bit more dynamic movement to this. So you'll be more than familiar. Uh, we're going to start with high knees. Just nice and smooth. High knees. Quick, quick, quick. What I want him to do is get as many reps as he can from point A to B. Go ahead. Smooth, 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 good. Nice, big man, nice. Coming back, this is easy, the butt kick. Okay, make sure we recoil very quickly on that hamstring. Go ahead and have that butt kick. So he's looking to recoil, that's actually really good. Okay, that was actually really good. We don't want to be lazy in our butt kicks here. What you just saw, he actually recoiled his stride, which is actually what we want. So from here, I'm gonna have him kind of just go side to side. You can face whatever direction you want. And we're just gonna go low to slow. Leave a nice gap between your feet. Activating those hips. Touch, come on back, and touch again, okay? 
Good. Hockey position here. He's actually activating his hips, leaving a nice space between his feet. And that change of direction, he actually comes down and touches, keeping his chest nice and tall. Tyler, just add a little bit more speed to that, same exact thing. Good. Touch is perfect. Nice work, nice work. Okay, now I'm going to have them stand tall. We're actually just going to have hands on our heads. We're just going to raise up our hips and open them up a little bit. As hockey players, you guys will probably feel this one. This one's really important. When you get here, just take it backwards. On this one, some people like to add a skip to it, which is totally fine. Some people like to walk with it. You guys, be your own athlete. It doesn't have to be perfect as far as doing what Tyler does or what I do. Be your own athlete. Just stay within the parameters of our program, and we'll be fine. So now we're going to add an A skip. Okay, it's just a little bit dynamic. More here. Nice A skip. up with a purpose he's adding force through his feet and actually trying to simulate high speed movements getting that body ready okay all right on this one hips are loaded toes are going to be pulled up to our shins and we're just going to be using the ball of our foot staying nice and tall and we're just going to kick him out okay go ahead watch his arms look at his arms they're moving excellent job we'll take that one backwards He's kicking his feet out quick with his arms and his shoulders are relaxed. Go ahead. Nice. Good, Tyler. Good work. How you feeling? Yeah. Getting warm? <laughs> so you'll see. It's loose, coach. <laughs> so you'll see him start breathing a little bit more. That's what we want. Okay. Literally, we're trying to activate that body in a dynamic way instead of just that slow, static stretching, which there's a great place for that, too. This is just more sports oriented here. All right, so after this, I start adding a little bit more force to the ground. Usually I add jumps, okay? When we do a warm up, I'm not trying to wear him out. I know he's a conditioned athlete. I'm trying to prep him. So keep that distance short. That way you're getting prepped for the workout, okay? So here I just want easy bunny hops or pogo jumps with a tuck jump in between. He'll probably try to get two to three. He's just gonna be here. When he's ready, he's gonna tuck and then just control, okay? So go ahead and do that. Breathing the whole time. Nice. Up, good. Okay, nice. The reason I let him pick and choose when he wants his tuck jumps, for one, it's chaos, and for two, he's his own athlete. Okay, he's gotta be ready to perform. Not cone, 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 okay? Uh, let's go single leg, same thing. Same thing, he's gonna pull up that knee and control. Go ahead. Just try to get two or three, whatever you guys are feeling. Nice, Tyler, nice. He'll bring him back with that opposite leg. Always breathing. Beautiful. Good, okay, relax, nice job. Hey, last one that I like to use here, we'll actually have power skips for height and distance. With his power, he'll probably be able to get one through the cones, but I'm gonna have him do two, which he'll probably extend out beyond the cones. Just a rocket jump. A lot of people are familiar with this one. We push and push. Okay, just give me two each way. That'd be perfect. Good. Push. Nice. Beautiful. Go and hit one more for me. Nice. He puts force to that ground and he transfers as hard as he can, which is really good. All right, man. This one you just breathe. So walk it out, crawl it up, just to really stretch out that body that we promote a blood flow. He's just gonna walk it out here, have a nice push up, and then baby steps up, trying to keep those knees straight to stretch out that posterior chain. He will do this the entire way. We want him breathing, relaxing, nice and easy. Good. Notice he's keeping his knees as straight as possible. Tight hamstrings is what we want to get rid of as we perform. Pop, 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 good. Take your time, nice, Tyler.
Good. All right, guys. So that right there is just a quick dynamic warm up. I think that took us about eight minutes. Um, you can see he's sweating a little bit. He's warm. He should feel very confident and actually performing stuff at high speed. All right. All right, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that dynamic warm up. Hey, now we're going to transition into quick feet. Uh, I'll use Coach Tyler here to help show you guys this. I'm also going to use just old hockey sticks. I hope you guys have them at home. If you don't have them at home, you guys can use a speed ladder if you have that. You can use pillows from the couch. You could use anything that you may have at home that's creative, anything that works. Okay, so don't overthink this part here. If you guys have cones that works, um, anything works, so just use what you can. So all Tyler's gonna do here when he comes through these sticks, he's gonna really focus on a rigid lower leg and being fast through the ground, okay? That lower leg rigidness promotes speed. Um, and that's really what I look for when we do quick feet through things. Instead of just being lazy, we want him to actually go through with a purpose, having that nice, quick, hard, rigid lower leg and being fast. So the first movement I'm gonna have him do is just gonna be two feet every square. And it's just gonna be stepping over. So Tyler, why don't you come through and go, go both through. sides, back and yeah, then you can just take your time on this side here. So notice when he goes through this, his shoulders are relaxed, his hands are fast, and his feet are going quick and putting force to the ground. So Tyler, let's do that same thing and just face lateral here. You can go to your left and we'll come back to his right. Nice, good, way to be light on those feet. His feet are light, he's not stomping. He's nice, 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 nice. So that's what we look for. Okay, so now we're just going to do every other. All I want him to do is have quick steps. It's just going to be here, pop, 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 okay? He's going to step through that circuit. Just one foot every angle here. Good. So this part right here will help you guys with a hockey start, having that quick foot step. So same thing, okay? We're just going to do that coming lateral. Push, 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 good. One more time. Good. All right. So from here, I'm going to have him cross over. Okay. So he's actually going to pick up his knee, keeping his chest nice and tall. He's going to cross over into the stick here and here. Okay. Each foot's going to step. And he's going to bring that one rigid. It's strong. It gives him that power and that lateral push. Push, push. Beautiful. Good. One more time. Good. Nice job, Tyler. Relax. Good. Hey, guys, biggest important thing, too, as you see, Tyler, if he starts breathing and breathing, if you train to a fatigue state, you're not being fast. So please uh, give yourself plenty of rest between this motion, 15, 20 seconds per, and you'll want to do each one of these probably five to six times. Um, give yourself a good workout. On this one, I'm going to have him jump. Okay, now we're just going to be little pogo jumps through these sticks. All he's gonna do is use these hands and these hips to promote speed up off the ground. So he's gonna push, push, and push. He's actually going to get height on this one. What's up, good. Nice, good. Go ahead and come through, go ahead and face me and we'll go to your right and then left. That way we take off a rep or two. So notice he's actually going through with power. He's training with a purpose. That's what we want every time, push. Push, good job, relax. So I'm gonna take him to a single foot now, okay? Same thing, right foot, boom, he's gonna get as much air as he can. When he comes down, he's stable. Nice, Tyler, nice, good. Good, 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 go ahead, left foot. Nice job, okay. Lateral for a single foot, okay? I like to use the outside leg. He's just gonna push in. Okay, he's gonna push, push, and push. Okay, go ahead and do that lateral side for me. Notice his chest, his arms are always working, his shoulders are relaxed, because obviously if we go high speed on the ice, we gotta carry a puck nice and loose. Good, Tyler, good. Okay, so now I'm gonna have you shuffle through. Guys, when we do quick feet, if you train with power and speed, eventually you're gonna wear out. So make sure we don't do too many reps to when we actually were training slow, okay? Quality over quantity is great when you do speed. So I'm gonna have him do, he's gonna work on his quick feet lateral and coming through. He's gonna work on his chest work, staying up. He's not gonna collapse. 
he's just gonna go side to side nice and fast, okay? And on the outside, he's gonna have a nice, I'll face you, he's gonna have a nice shin angle, okay? That shin should be ready to go that way as he crosses that stick, okay? So go ahead, Tyler. Good, good, nice, good. When he does that, notice he has a nice pause at the end. He doesn't rush the movement. He was here, made sure he's in a good position, and then he goes, okay? A lot of us like to rush it. Let's not do that. Let's take our time. Tyler, let's do that one more time. Oh, good, good. Yeah, nice job. All right, guys, next quick feet drill I enjoy. It's just small space work using your feet, keeping your hips loaded. That's really why I do these drills. Uh, promotes a lot of power in that hockey position. So the first drill I'm gonna have Coach Tyler do is basically a figure eight with a lot of choppy steps to help him promote power. He's gonna have a nice lateral push and then get back to it, okay? The reason we have that lateral push is to make sure we're controlled, move, and then speed, okay? We don't ever wanna rush anything. So all he's gonna do is he's gonna stay choppy, nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice and smooth, and you'll see him take a nice lateral step and then we'll go back through here. It's a nice figure eight push, okay? So Tyler, here we go. He's relaxed, the shoulders are moving, good. And he takes his time, he's his own athlete. Nice, Tyler, nice. So that right there will wear you out, okay? So the sets and reps won't be very high. Um, what he did a good job at, he stayed low. He had to move. You heard him breathing, that's a good power movement. Next movement I'm gonna have him do is just quick acceleration decel, acceleration decel with a back pedal. He's gonna come up from point A, go to that second cone, break down, come back. We're gonna go to that third cone, break down, come back, fourth cone, break down and come back. So biggest thing here is keeping your hips underneath and staying controlled within the body. Good. Good. Nice Tyler. Hey, that was really good. Nice job. All right, now I'm gonna extend him out a little bit in this drill. He's actually gonna run all the way up, back pedal, and then he's just gonna be quick between these cones. So when he comes up, he's gonna drop that hip, have that decel, push, 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 push. He's gonna push, he's gonna come through quick. Okay, that's all he's looking for. Just a nice fluid drill here. Good, push, push, control. Push, 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 good. And that's it, guys, on the quick feet portion. That right there should be a great uh, workout for you to get tired and also train your speed within yourself, okay? The things you saw here, and I'll try to touch base on, uh, his shoulders are really relaxed, his chest stayed up, he never collapsed, and he kept his feet nice and strong underneath him. So I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll move on to uh, sprints. All right, guys. Hey, we're gonna get into our sprints and our drives here. Um, this is a short distance. We have about, give or take, 10 yards. Okay, I want it short when we sprint and when we drive. We are truly, literally working on directional force and power from a stop position. Okay, that's what hockey is, starts and stops. So with Coach Tyler here, we're gonna go through a couple different starts. Basically, we want to be the best from unorthodox positions. That's why we train all different types of starts, okay? At least that's in my opinion. There's all kinds of different opinions out there, but this is what I find to be successful, especially in hockey. So that being said, I'm gonna have Coach Tyler run through this, okay? The first start we're gonna work on is basically all we're gonna do is come up on our toes, lean into it, and have that nice knee drive and catch that power coming down. Okay, so Tyler, if you could just come up through, we want to lean in, keep that chest up, and just drive through. Good. So notice his big start. You'll see his arms. He's very powerful off the start. That's what we want. So as he walks back, he'll come, you're good. As he walks back and gets in position, we're going to go over 10 different starts here. So that's one for you. On this next one, all I'm going to have him do is go over in the staggered stance. This one's probably the most comfortable for a lot of people. He's gonna pick and choose his foot. We'll do both sides. He's gonna basically take his toe to his heel. He's gonna be in a hockey position. He's really gonna work on that knee drive. And when he, when I, 
when we say knee drive, guys, the last thing I want is you to come up here, okay? We want direction of force. So when we do that, we want that knee drive to come forward, okay? That's what he's gonna really emphasize with this sprint here. Push, 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 beautiful. Nice job. So he did a good job of driving his knee forward. All I'm gonna have him do is the opposite side. Clearly we train both legs, so go ahead, Tyler. Rip, rip, rip. Nice, good job. Okay, so this next sprint, I'm actually gonna have him activate his hips turning to one side or the other. Um, I call that a hip shift. He's gonna shuffle once or twice and he's gonna turn it back over to go forward. So Tyler, this is kind of what I'm looking for. When you shift, it's just quick, okay? We're stable here. So once again, quick, shuffle, shuffle, and I'll drive through. Push, 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 beautiful. As he did that, you can tell he stayed low. When he had that hip shift, he didn't come up, okay? He shifted, he shuffled low, and he drove. That's kind of what we look for in that type of sprint right there. So this next sprint, um, all I'm going to have you do is tuck jump, tuck jump. Hey, this one here is actually just going to have two tuck jumps. And then he's going to land soft and drive out. Push, push, push. Good. Nice job, Tyler. One here. Um, okay, the next sprint here, I'm gonna have him actually drop down. He's gonna make a quick hip drop, and he's gonna drive off that lateral leg. So it kind of looks like this here. Oh, he'll, he'll have square feet, he'll drop, and then he'll drive. So laterally, he'll be here, he'll face that way or this way, he'll drop to that outside leg and drive out. So make sure you have a drive off your outside leg. Here. Uh, Yes, yeah, start lateral, no hip shift. Okay, right here. Yeah, perfect. You gotcha. just drop into a lunge and then it'll drive out of it. Gotcha. Drop, push, do it. Nice job, man. It's probably six, I think. Well, that's six. Do you want to do the other side too or not? Yeah, let's go, yeah, let's go ahead. So same here. Go ahead and do the other side for me. Keeps the chest nice and tall. Strong hips, push. Nice, Tyler, nice. Good. Yeah, so you can do two each way yeah. on that one. Yeah. For these last ones here, we'll just be on the ground. We'll have a push-up start, and then I'll keep you seated. Boom, you'll be running your hands through, legs straight out. You'll be pushing arms, and I'll say go, and you'll just get up in some lunge as fast as you can. Right. So, is the first one just push up position? Yeah, just push up position. All right, guys, here's another sprint for you. We're going from a push up position. We'll go on my cadence here. If you don't have someone to help you with sprinting, just find your timing on your own, okay? Ready? Go. He's up and he's moving. Brings that chest up nice and strong, keeps his knees and toes up. Nice job. So now I'm gonna bring Tyler down to a seated position. When we do this, I'm gonna have him actually keep his toes active. They're pulled towards his knees. His chest is up in a neutral position. And I'm gonna have two coaching cues go and go the first go he's going to be here and he's just going to move his arms okay nice and loose in the shoulder he's just going to move my second go is actually going to release him he's just going to get up as quick as he can and drive out so here we go go notice his shoulders are relaxed he's in a nice neutral position with his spine go he gets up quick and he wheels nice work tyler good Hey, last sprint here, guys. All I'm gonna have him do is have a nice turn and drive. I'm adding a little proprioception with a quick speed movement. 
So I'm gonna have him actually facing backwards. I'm gonna say go, he's gonna turn to his left and drive. Obviously we'll turn both ways and he'll perform two of these, one to the left, one to the right. Go. Nice job, good. One more big man, you got this. Go. Quick turn, drive, drive, drive. Nice. All right guys, hey, those are our sprints. That's 10 to 12 sprints that I really like to add to our athletes. Not only does it work on drive and power, okay, you notice Tyler just trained with a purpose. He actually put power through the ground and shot those knees forward on every start. We really want that forward drive so we have that angular velocity and pushing us forward. Um, he did a very good job. You guys work on those sprints. When we do this, make sure we train both sides. Obviously we do one and then the other side as well. Um, and outside of that, we wanna do two to three reps per position, okay? When you guys train speed, like I said, quality over quantity, we don't wanna train to fatigue because then we're not really being fast. So we give ourselves ample rest and then we train 10 to 15 sprints and then a 10 yard dash here and you'll be good to go. All right guys, anytime we do a high velocity sprint workout, quick feet, um, it's really important to recover the body for the next day or even the entire week. So now we're gonna go through a flexibility circuit. I'm just gonna have Coach Tyler stretch out his hamstrings, his hips, shoulders, basically the cool down phase of every workout that we should be focusing on. Um, it keeps the body mo mobile, okay? Adds that flexibility so we can stay fast. It really just keeps us safe to work in good ranges of motion. When we have that post recovery, um, today we're just gonna work on stretching. I know a lot of you guys have a fl uh, foam roller at home, a softball, ice, all that stuff uh, goes into the actual bin of recovery. So you guys utilize that as much as you can. It helps keep us safe and it helps keep us fresh. So Coach Tyler here, uh, flexibility, all I'm gonna have him do is reach down and touch his toes. This one's about as simple as it gets. But when you stretch, guys, you're looking to hold a stretch for 20 to 30 seconds. That old school 10 second movement, that's out the door. We're trying to actually stretch the muscles as well as the tendons and ligaments within the joint. So Tyler's here, he's stretching. Make sure you're breathing, we're relaxing. And really, this is the time for you to recover from a good workout. So like I said, we'll hold this for 30 seconds, always breathing. All right, Tyler, go ahead and stand up for me. From here, I like to switch off from lower body to upper body. I just want him to do trunk twists, heads fall on the body, okay? We'll go five each way here, go ahead. Notice he's in control. He's not really adding rapid movements here. We're just trying to loosen up, get that blood going. So his next movement, he's just gonna take his legs apart in a safe position. I don't need the splits here. He's actually gonna reach down to the middle and he's gonna push his hips back. Okay, so when he touches, we can do this, but when you lean back, it gets those upper hamstrings and really gets the deep muscles of the hip. He's just gonna sit back into his hips. We're looking for that stretch, nice and comfortable. Another key point here, Guys, don't ever stretch the pain, okay? Make sure we stretch the mild discomfort. Um, that way we stay safe. Once again, he's gonna hold this for 30 seconds. Good, go ahead and come up top. We'll probably keep it shorter. From here, he's gonna maintain the strong position. All he's gonna do is roll out his shoulders. He's gonna go 10 forward. 10 backwards, nice and smooth. Go ahead. So Tyler's actually gonna come down to a squat position here. 
He's going to extend one leg out, okay? He's gonna keep his toes down to the ground here. When you do this stretch, you'll feel a nice groin stretch, extremely important for hockey players. From there, he's gonna hold. After that, he's not gonna come out of it. He's actually just gonna rotate, externally rotate that hip, and he's gonna sit down, and actually you'll feel a nice stretch on the back side of the leg. So when you guys are doing this stretch, always breathe but make sure we do both sides, okay? So take your time, get one side, go ahead and rotate that foot up so they can see. So what he did, he just externally rotated from the hip, now he's hitting the hamstrings. And you'll feel it deep in that groin as well still. So as he's breathing, he's resting, he'll come out of it, he'll switch other sides. Go ahead and go the other leg, Tyler. Good. And rotate up. He rotates in a controlled position. Good. Three, two, one. And we'll just take the seat off the foot, actually. So our seated stretch, okay, a lot of you guys are very comfortable with what we call the butterfly stretch. I like to add two positions just so we get that low back, the QLs. Those are always active when we skate. So our first position when I work with hockey players, our legs are actually farther out. Hips are externally rotated, feet are on the ground. We're just gonna lean over and try to pull ourselves here, chest down, okay? And when he does this with those legs extending out, he feels a nice stretch in the back side of our hips. Those QLs here that keeps us nice and tight. And that's kind of what you're looking for. Some of us will be more flexible than others. Good, Tyler. And when we transition to step two or position two, he's just going to bring his feet in. This is the normal butterfly stretch, what a lot of us are really used to. He's just going to hold. On this one, you guys can rock a little bit if you need to get that extra hip stretch. You'll notice he's just going very slow and controlled. Very, very important when I'm doing this. Good. Okay, from this position here, We'll transition, all I'm gonna have him do is bring one leg behind him. This is my favorite because you get to just truly relax, okay? All you're gonna do is lean back, hang out. You have a nice quad stretch on that right or left leg. You really just get to relax here. Good, go ahead and switch sides for me. Tyler, from this position, I'm actually gonna have you cross one leg over, okay? We're gonna go from, we're gonna do a T-spine rotation to get our upper back, and then we're gonna go directly into our pretzel stretch, okay? So all he's gonna do is take this left arm, put it on the back side of his right leg. He's gonna try to just a turn, and all you're trying to do is open up that T-spine or upper back, okay? We really wanna be loose in that upper body. Good. Go ahead and switch for me, Tyler. Switch legs. He's going to open up. Other side. Good, guys. From there, it's a real easy transition to go to the pretzel stretch. Pick a leg. All he's going to do is cross over. Our right hand, if our right leg is up, is going to shoot through. He's just going to hold. He's going to lean back. He's going to try to get that. time that he's stretching he's breathing he's relaxing really bringing that heart rate down so his body's actually recovering go ahead and switch legs for me good nice strong hold he's breathing has a good breath guys it's so important to breathe the right way when we stretch it really helps with recovering especially when we're sprinting on the ice if you train that diaphragm and the diaphragmatic breathing it's extremely important it will be a positive benefit Tyler go ahead and relax hey last but not least he's just gonna roll to his belly and we're gonna get what we call a sprinter stretch and all he's gonna do here is put one leg down he's gonna drive the heel back into the ground really stretching out the calf and the Achilles tendon you notice he's breathing relaxing good 
Tyler Rowan switch legs. Nice, perfect. All right, guys. Hey, that's our flexibility post-workout recovery session. Uh, I appreciate it. Really important keys, guys. Just make sure we don't stretch the pain. Make sure we always breathe and relax. We're trying to recover, and that's a great way to do it. Now I'm going to throw it to Coach Trevor Hannis, who's going to help you with the skill session. So stay tuned, and good luck. Hello, right, there you guys. This is Coach Trevor Hannis here with the Dallas Stars Elite and uh, Texas Tigers. And uh, just bringing some home videos. Uh, today we're going to work on some um, uh, scoring opportunities and using deception when you score. Um, I've got like four different uh, deception moves and and uh, and situations that we have entering the offensive zone that you can work on. Uh, this is my son Cross Hannis. He'll be kind of demonstrating a lot of them, and then we'll uh, I'll do some uh, demonstrations as well, and uh, and have some other people. Uh, Coach Carson is also here, and his sons are here as well. And uh, but I just want to go over in detail the four different uh, uh, um, deception scoring opportunities that we're gonna work on today. All right, so Cross on the first one. Cross is just gonna come up over here. He's obviously a lefty, so um, you know he's gonna come in from, the, from his offside. And when he comes in, and we're gonna, we're gonna really break this thing down here. Um, Grace, you can go over here. And we're gonna break this thing down. So Cross will walk through it here. He's gonna come in from his offside. His hands are gonna be out. He's gonna cut across the middle. Look, deception, and then fire. So, as we go over this move here, um, we're really gonna have our hands out. We gotta make sure that we look away from the goaltender, push that goaltender off the post, and make sure that defender kind of pushes over to the side too. But when we come in, we wanna use deception, look, and then fire, okay? We wanna roll our wrists, cut across the middle in the high slot, with our hands out, so cross, go again. I want to break it down. I want, I want you to stop to show this move here. Okay, stop here. Okay, so as cross cuts and comes across the middle, now his hands come out, he's looking away from the target. So the goaltender obviously is looking at the, the ball or his blade, right? So he's kind of making, he's tracking a blade, but goalies always kind of look at the body language as well. Okay, so as cross looks away, his hands go that way. And now as he comes across, he rolls his wrist and fires that puck, all right? So on this particular move or play, as you come across, you gotta just use some deception here, fake, and then roll the wrist and come back as that goalie pushes off the post and that defender kind of comes with you. I really feel as a coach here in Dallas um, for the last 13, 14 years, one of the biggest things that's really missing with, with the hockey players uh, is, and now we're working on deception and fakes in scoring opportunities, but really what it comes down to is really the hockey sense part of it and the game. Um, this is a hockey sense play because you have to kind of, you got to sell something that you're actually not going to do. And it's got to be quick. I mean, obviously the game of hockey is real quick and there's quick decisions made, but the deception part of it and the fake part of it for a player that can do this at a high speed are your best players. I mean, truly are. So let's walk through this one more time with Cross. Cross comes in wide as a left-hander. He comes in on his offside. He cuts across to pull that goal, and then he's and then he uh, ro rotates and uh, snaps those wrists. Comes across the high slot, and then shoots it low and shoots it hard. So on the deception play, looks away from the goalie, the target. Comes across, hands are out, and then fires. Okay. So that's the first one that we're gonna work on. The next one that we're gonna work on is uh, another deception play. Make sure you're moving around. <laughs> Our deception play here, so we have, let's just say this is a two on one, okay? On a two on one, and we'll get, uh, let's get Jensen, you come in on this one here as a defenseman, okay? <laughs> on the two on one here, we're gonna, we're gonna come in and you got to, you can't just telegraph the play. I mean, here it's a two on one. Obviously, there should be a great play that's made and a good scoring chance and a good shot on net that's made. Um, on this particular play, we're going to work on faking a pass and then shooting. So when Cross comes over, actually, you're going to be on this side, bud. So he's actually going to sell the pass 
So he's going to come, he's going to look towards me, thinking that I may be the shooter, right? And, and sell the D-man and his stick, and also the goalie to slide over off the post. So as he walks in, he's going to push his, uh, he's going to look, push that stick over the puck, and then quickly snap the puck on net. So the ideal situation in this play is to buy that goalie to cut, pull away from the puck on his angle and to get that D-man looking like he's gonna pass the puck over to me. Okay, so we walk through this here, we walk through. Go back, that's it. Hold on, hold on, go back, Ross, go back. We're fine, we're fine. We're just, uh, do it. so just walk back as a D-man, yeah. So here we go, he comes in, he's gonna go over the puck and then shoot, okay? So continue to, uh, Maybe move the camera up a little bit here, Grace. Okay, so as, if I'm a righty now, if I'm a righty, it's kind of the same thing. But I want to make sure that I look here. I don't want to look at the goaltender, because that's telling me, and that's, and he's thinking, that's telling him shot. And I want to, that's what I don't want, is I want to show pass. So I come in here, we back up here, it's two on one, I look here, and then I go, and I snap it there. So I look to pass, I go over the puck, and then quick snapshot, okay? So that's another deception play in the offensive zone in a scoring uh, opportunity. Does that make sense? Um, this, these type of things, and we're gonna go over a lot of this stuff. We've got lots of weeks of this. Myself and uh, Coach Carson, Coach Forrest, there's gonna be other coaches that are come on, coming in on this. So we're gonna do this uh, five days a week. And we're just going to break down a lot of different things. I've got two more scoring uh, situations. Two more scoring situations here where you're gonna, we're going to use deception and some fakes, okay? You guys, maybe we can move the camera in a little bit get away from over here. Okay. It zooms in. So, the next one here. See if you can hit back now. Okay, on this particular drill, Cross is going to come in, a player's coming in, the goalie's coming out to challenge the play, right? Obviously, as a player, you've got to have your head up and know, okay, is the goalie coming out? Is he deep in his net? Where is he at? That's the hockey sense and smarts that comes into play, okay? So, in this particular play, Cross sees that the goalie has come out. He's come out to take away his angle and his shooting angle. So, as he's going to step in, he's going to really sell a slap shot from the from pretty far out. He doesn't have to be, he doesn't have to be closer to the net or deep because he needs a, a little bit of time to make that play to push that puck out to his forehand side, make the goalie go down, and then put it home. Okay? So he comes in here, cross goes, he sells a slap shot, pushes it out, different angle, okay? Different angle from so he came from over here, he started the uh, uh, over here with the puck and he, and he faked here and ended up shooting here. So if you look at this particular play, if you sell it with speed and sell it quick enough, okay? So if I'm doing that as a righty, I come in here, I sell it, I gotta sell it here. It's gotta be a quick up, quick down. I gotta really sell it quick, but I cannot use my backhand at all. This particular play has to go from here, sell it, and then see my top hand, and see how my, my blade is open? I've got to get it here and then push it right away on my forehand and then put it home. Him. Does that make sense? Cross will go through it again as a lefty. Cross will go over it again as a lefty. He comes in, he's going to sell it. It's a hard sell. Push and then fire. And in that split second of selling that slap shot, that goalie should bite for that split second. If he bites for that split second, it's over. It's a goal. It's a goal. Patience. But here, here is one thing I want to add to this one. As you notice, Cross, when he when he sold it here, he didn't shoot it here. He did not shoot it here. That would have been a still a good angle for the goalie to make the save. We want to score goals, don't we? He sold it here, and he pushed it out to here. Because when this goalie goes, he bit. He bit, and now he has zero chance to get all the way over here. He, he sells it there, but then quickly shoots it. 
the goalie still has a very good percentage chance of saving the puck. True. That's the difference between a smart hockey player and a goal scorer and someone that just doesn't score. Truly. So once again, cross goes over here, sells the fake, sell, push out, out, and fire. And then there's our goal. That's the third one. That's a scoring opportunity. Now, one more we're going to go over, and then we're going to talk about different things, and then we'll do, we'll show you guys, we'll just do a bunch of us, we'll start to do these drills, okay? The fourth one, we call it the Sidney Crosby drill, or uh, move. It's a nice, great deception fake move. He comes in on the goaltender, he has his hands out, he's looking at the goaltender, he sells it, he leans his body forward. I'll, I'll walk it through here as Cross goes, walk, just walk it through on this one, the Sidney Crosby. He's gonna come in, he's gonna sell it, and his hands are out. He's gonna heel kick, heel kick, and then he's gonna pull it to his backhand, okay? When he pulls it to his backhand, he is not releasing that puck right away. Kind of similar to that last draw on the fake slap shot. Does that make sense? The fake slap where he faked, but then he pushed it out. Different angle for the goaltender, so we can, we can make him bite, but then we gotta, we gotta push it out so we have a little bit more net. It may be a worse angle for us as a shooter, but a lot better, a higher percentage scoring opportunity, okay? So watch Cross again on this one, on this fourth one. It's the Crosby comes in, hands are out, face, heel kick, and then goes to the back end, okay? So now, if, if I do that as a righty, I would like it even sold a little bit more. Obviously, we only got so much room here on the driveway. But when you come in on this move, I come in here, I, have, I got my head up, my hands are out, I sell it right here, okay? And I get my heel up, so I go here. All in one motion, here. That makes that goalie bite for that split second. That's what I wanna sell. I gotta sell. The move is made right here. Once you, if you sell them here, you got them, but listen, you gotta push that, that puck off to the side. Your angle is gonna be worse for the net, but higher percentage to score. Does that make sense? Too many kids down here, I've seen them try and do this Crosby move, and they don't make it work because they do this. They come in, and then they only go to here and backhand. Well, the goaltender is gonna make that safe. I don't care if you sold him here, he's still, he's still, even if he goes down, he's still gonna fight for that puck. He's not giving up on the play. Does that make sense? Goalies do not give up on the play until it's in the back of the net. So, once again, kind of like that last, uh, that last scoring opportunity and move and deception move. So when I come in here, sell, and then I gotta pull it out to here, patient, and then backhand and in. Does that make sense? The initial sell bites him, and then as he goes out on that angle, it's backhand in. So once again, cross, let's try it again, and use a little bit more patience here in this area and put it down. I'm the goalie, I come in, sell, and then there it is. Does that make sense? Guys, I'm telling you, this stuff here is the difference. I, I always, when I coach uh, players and, and, and teams, I always say, who, who likes to score goals? Everyone raises their arms. They all want to score. Defense, men, forward, doesn't matter. You all want to score. My thing is, not only you got to have a good shot, you got to be accurate, but how is your deception? How is your, how is, can, can, can you sell your shot or your play to not only the goalie or the defender, but maybe even the whole, the, everybody in the whole building? They're thinking you're doing one thing and you absolutely do something else. And the minute you do that, you watch how much success you're gonna have as a player. But deception and, and, and scoring opportunities with fakes and deception will be the difference. I'm telling you right now. Um, you know, you look at uh, different sports and you look at, I always, I'm gonna refer to two athletes right now in different sports that are high, high end, hall of famers, unbelievable uh, players. One, Tom Brady, for the New England Patriots, obviously he's gone now to Tampa, but arguably the best quarterback to ever play the game. And if you look at Tom and you go, 
yeah, he's a, he's a good athlete, but he's not unbelievable. He doesn't even run that much. Really, one of his big biggest assets of, a, of being a great quarterback to, to me for Tom Brady is his ability to read the field. His ability to, to sell the ball going one way and then knowing that he's got the receiver open to the right side the other way. And Tom is one of the best ever to do that. Like, he just really sold defenses and they, they, they would bite on him. They would bite. He'd come back in the pocket. He would look. They would bite for that split second. And then there's Tom going deep that way for a 40-yard bomb. And he did that constantly. He was constantly using deception to his game. And to me, that was one of his best assets as, a, as, a, as an athlete and as a quarterback. Another guy that comes to my mind is uh, the, the kid from uh, Golden State, Stephon Steph Curry. Curry. You look at Stephon Curry. The guy is not much bigger than I am or crosses. I mean, he's maybe 6'2", 6'3", maybe something like that, but he's not that big. But why is he one of the best in the league and then in, in the NBA? He's one of the best players. I mean, to me, what makes him so good? I mean, I look at it, there's two things that really he does very well. And one of them is deception, with the ball and without the ball. I mean, yes, he can shoot and he can throw up 50, 60 foot threes from wherever and just drain it and splash <laughs> every ball. But he's very deceptive. So he may have the ball and all of a sudden he may be going here and all of a sudden he passes it over there. But he doesn't look over there to pass. He's here and then he passes it by looking this way, right? Or he may look here and he may look to pass and then all of a sudden he shoots it up. He's very deceptive in his, in his game. Even when he doesn't have the ball, he may go fake here and then get to an open space, get the ball and put in a easy two layup. Like the guy's uh, court sense is off the charts. He's very deceptive with the ball and without the ball. And in this episode here, we're just going over four simple scoring deceptive plays using some fakes and some deception. Guys, I'm telling you down here, if you want to be a great hockey player, you got to have deception to your game. Okay? And these are just some scoring things. As we get on into, these, uh, into this program here with the Tigers and just working on different things, we're going to go over a lot more different moves and even in the deception department. But we just wanted to kind of cover four today. And as you watch this video and then go back out onto the driveway, I just encourage you guys to go over these and, and work on these for, you know, 10 minutes of each drill. Uh, uh, for each drill, about 10 minutes. And you're going to see how much better you get. But you got to show deception. you got to show fakes. Now we got Coach Carson, Cross, myself, uh, Carson's boys, uh, Zeke and, and, um, and um, Jensen. And we're just going to work on these moves. So, uh, Grace, we'll just be in one line. You can kind of just go down one at a time. Guys, we'll just kind of take, uh, we'll let one go, and then the next guy go after about 10 seconds. And we'll just do these moves and just show how, what, what we're practicing these moves. So, any one of those, uh, mm -hmm. please, 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 Coach Carson coming in, he's looking at his move. Yes, sir. Good. He sold that, he sold the pass. He sold pass. There's Cross with the fake slapper. He pulls it out to the side. There's the goal. Here comes Zeke, he comes in. Pulls, shot. Jensen. Oh, there, oh, see? Good try though, he sold the Crosby move. Okay, comes in, cuts across, rolls the wrist, looks the other way, fires it on net. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Just give me a few minutes, I'm on video. Nice fake, good job. Cross comes in, sells the Crosby, and pulls it. Okay? I'm a righty. Most of these guys here are lefties. Actually, they all are. So I'm going to show you as a righty a little bit. I'm going to come in, fake slapper, pull it out, and shot. You got to sell it. You got to sell the slapper quick, though.
Oh, there's the Crosby, backhand, patient, and in. Good, good. This one here. I'm going to do the Crosby. Fake, pull. Boom. So as you guys can see, we just done worked on some deception here, some fakes. Entering, making a, 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 a scoring opportunity in the offensive house. And these are just uh, four different, uh, you know, either breakaways or just different things you can work on to give the goalies some deception, some fakes, defenders. And uh, I just really encourage you guys to do this. This will help your game tremendously. What I see down here a lot from a lot of players is that you're not, you're, 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 you're a predictable hockey player. See, in these, in these little things that we worked on, we're called, it's called you're unpredictable. That's what you want to be. You want to be an unpredictable hockey player. You don't want to be predictable. So as you go and work on these moves, make sure you sell it with what, where you're looking, where your hands are, you know, where your body is, all that kind of stuff, where the blade is as it's opened up on your stick. And you're going to find that you're going to make the goalie bite, you're going to make the defender bite, and you just might score some more goals. Actually, I guarantee you, you will. Anyway, everyone be safe. Uh, it was... Uh, Good chatting with you guys and hopefully you guys get a lot out of this. All right, take care. Thanks.